Hello there, I'm another Magento Dev. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a multi store Magento locally. So, it, it, obviously, it's a, it's a fairly simple thing to do in the admin is setting up a multi site um, and setting Magento up to be that. And you can find loads of sort of um, instruction on how to do that if you go in a search engine and search for just that. What I'm going to concentrate on today, although I am going to show you the initial admin setup, is I'm going to concentrate on how to do it locally on multi and, and get it and get it working on multiple domains. Get your site working across multiple domains locally. Um, I'm going to be using Valet Linux Plus for this. Um, the same th the same principle would uh, count on any other sort of local host system. So MAMP springs to mind you could do this on MAMP you're just gonna have to sort of uh, think through the the differences between Valley and MAMP um, also Zamp and anything that provides sort of a local host with a with an actual URL Valley is what I'd recommend like you can you can get it on Mac if you if you wanted to um, so right how does it work well we need to make some config changes but first of all uh, we're gonna add the store so the way you add a store in Magento is or add an extra start if you like in Magento is you'd go to uh, stores and then I'd go to all stores and then you basically see the store so as you install Magento you basically get this look main website uh, main web store the main store view so these are all quite important so we're going to add another um, essentially another another website so not a star view so two separate domains so we're not talking like english us french we're talking you know like dot code.uk and dot com for example if you wanted them to be different or but in this example we're going to do m245p one's going to remain as the main site but we're going to do m245p1 another dot test and that's what we're going to um set it up as because you might want to work on two different themes locally stuff like that um, and that's why you might want to do this locally. So we're going to go for create website rather than create store. And we're going to call it another website. And then we're going to call it another website. Um, we'll leave sort order. I'm going to save that website. Okay. So now we've got to create the store. I'm going to call this another store. Store. Right, so this is important with regards to multi stores, and I can come back to this. I'll touch on this, but you can have a different category route for a different store. You don't have to, but you can have different categories essentially. Um, so, but for now, we're going to set the root category as the default category, the only one. So they basically show the same thing um, on each one, and then we're going to add a store view. So create store view, and we're going to assign that to another store. So we've kind of got this cascading effect of main website, main web store, but we're going to sign it to this. So this, incidentally, would be, if we was going to create a, a different language uh, view, you'd, you'd do it in here. So imagine this would be like German, but then you wouldn't have it as another store, you'd have it as part of the main web store. So it'd be another store view on the main web store. We're going fully separate, fully separate on this. So we're going to call this another. And then another, right? So we're going to make it enabled. And we're going to save it. Yeah, it can take a long time. It's not going to though, which is handy. Um, right, so we've got everything set up um, in the in the sort of in the in the admin now. So, well, not everything set up, but the, in terms of building that star view out, we've got two different star views now. So, if I come over to say categories, for example, and I might just need to flush cache actually, but we'll see. I've got it in developer mode. It should be. All right, yeah. So now we've got our two different store views, right? You can sort of see it in these areas where you have the where you're able to um, where you're able to scope it. One thing I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm going to bm indexer the index and um, and bm cache flush.
Right, I've had, a, I've had an error on catalogue search, but I'm not too worried about that at this point. I'll, I'll resolve that later, but I am going to flush the cache. Okay. Right, then. so we should we should be all okay now. Um, let's just jump into configuration. Because in configuration, we're going to now set up the other URL that we're going to use. So what we're going to go to is we're going to go to um, base URL here. So this is our base URL for, for this store. Um, I believe, I'm not sure if I've got this set up in my config. I sometimes set the base URLs. I haven't have I got a theme set? I ain't got a theme on this one. Right, okay. So this is basically set in um it's gonna be set in the admin for the purposes of this, but you can do this anyway. So this is gonna remain as default config, and then we're gonna go for our another website scope and we're gonna extend it. And we're gonna change the uh two base URLs here to something else. So we're gonna change it to that. All right. And when you're doing this, please make sure that you don't remove by example uh, by mistake the trailing slash. Magento has to have that trailing slash. Um, so that that's going to be our URL, right? So 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 once they're all set up in there, okay, right. So how do we get this working locally? So the way let, let's have a look at how we've got um, how we've got this one working locally on Valley. Um, right. So if we just go in here, and then I can see. Um, like when I set up this store, I would say, um, actually, what I would actually do, there's many different ways you can do this, this is where I prefer. I'd, go, I'd drop to my sites folder, and then all I'd do is do valet link. Well, in fact, valet by default will make, because I've added a folder, and this is my root folder, valet knows that this is going to be my domain so m245p1.test is sort of an automatic thing but what i would have done is i'd have done valet secure and then i would have um i would have specified m245 m245p1 and, and i'd have just valet secured that now because i'm adding an extra domain here what i'm going to need to do is i'm going to need to sit i'm going to need to be in um, my actual directory, um, so I'm gonna have to be in where, where, you know, basically where I was. And what I would do is I'd, I'm gonna have to specify now the domain that I want as a link. So if, I, for example, I probably I want I want to add the domain of m245 another. So I would say valet link, and by saying that I'm saying this folder m245p1 valet link. So I'm saying also link, basically, M245P1, another. I'm saying basically link that to this folder as well, right? Which it's done. And now if I check it, I could say valet links, right? Obviously, I've got a few in here, um, but there. I've got now link into this folder home Adam sites my folder where this Magento lives I've got my oh, I've screwed up and I right so I'll show you how to remove one because I've done a typo right but it's there look what I added was there so I can also say valet unlink I'll put valet Linux plus in the uh, description by the way and now I'm gonna add the one I actually want, which is just M245P1, another link. And that's added it. So now if I go valet links again, so obviously I've messed about here, but you can see how simple it is. Right, notice that it isn't the secure one. I need it to be a secure one, right? So what I would do then is in this folder, or you can basically do it from anywhere, valet secure, and then I would say M245P1, Another it's got to run it as sudo and it should now if I go valet links so it's in there as a secure URL, right? 
So now I've got to tell Magento to route my store view to this, my other store view, if you like, to this domain. And this is where you just have to make a change in, in the code. So I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Right. Um, there we go. So I've got this as a little boilerplate, what I often use, but I've, I've amended it. So this doesn't go, obviously I've just put it in a text file, but this essentially needs to go locally in your index in pub. So pub index, and you sort of bang it about here. Right, I should move that, that one's coming, that one maybe. Right, so basically if I save this now, and I just, um, so what I'll do, I'll re-index and I'll flush cache. Wait for this to jump through. Right, and now if I go to that domain in my browser, well, so first of all, we'll just check that this one's all working still, um, and I haven't broken anything. Right, so I'm going to advance. Ah, right. I have. I've broken something. Now, what have I broken? Let's have a look at my config. So, we're saying M245 test. So, it's always worth checking this first. So, we've got. Ah, I've mixed them up. Look, I've mixed up my star views. So, we'll say default is that one. <coughs> so, where am I getting this information from? Well, in here. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show you now until it's fixed, right? But I'll um, cause the back end won't run either. And this, these were basically, if you remember, these were the store view names. So these were the website view names. The were the the sort of up. So it was the third tier. It was the one closest to the right. These were the store view names because I'm running the store view um, model here, store manager model. Um, I'm just going to re-index and flush again. So. Obviously, making all these mistakes has a do. So you can run it on on different. Um, you know, you can. You can, I always use Star Manager because it's it's. You can use it for multilingual. You can use it for for not just web views. You can can use it for any any view, um, any type of star view. Sorry, um, and so forth. Five P one test. That's good. And now, if we go to another. It also shows on another as well. And this is actually a different star view. Um, but obviously I'm just showing the same stuff at the moment. But it is a different star view and that's all working. So if I wanted to set a different theme for that star view, which I could probably try and do actually, I might change it to, um, cause there is no, th I've got no theme on this, no custom theme. But if I go to design, theme, uh, configuration, can see that both my star views are using Luma. So if I change another to blank, I might not have done that at the right level. I'll do it here as well. To blank. So we've got main website showing Luma. Yeah, okay. And then I'll flush the old cache. Yeah, the other star view is now blank theme. So this is this is how you can obviously set it up to, you know, develop uh, locally, basically. Um, yeah. And that, that was a you know a quick explanation. Obviously, take it away from there. That that's how you develop locally. Obviously, as I say, if you're using MAMP, all that faffing about on Valley ain't gonna really apply to you. But the principle's the same. You always want to redirect your. You always want your domains that you're allocating to it pointing to your main folder basically, and then it's this bit that does the routing. Now I'll say one more thing about this. It depending on your deployment system. It's probably going to want to deploy changes to index. So this essentially could end up on your live server. Now, it is quite 
um, specific to what you put in here so it's not going to harm anything live but if you'd rather not have it in there you might want to either say that um, index PHP doesn't you know get sent to your server because it very rarely changes um, and if, if for whatever reason an upgrade um, does change it uh, then you could obviously deal with that manually or you could actually add more cases so sometimes what I would do is say for example I have a, a live site as well um, and it is quite useful uh, depending on your server setup actually you can actually use this for making sure that multi sites or for getting multi sites multi site sorry working uh, live so say for example this was you know that's my test URL and then I have a live URL for whatever reason like m25p uh, m245p1.com um, I can I can add that there and then I'd obviously have my live version of this site as well which would be the another one right and I could have as many cases as I want in here because I could also have for example say for example you've got a staging site so you have staging.m245.com which are all live ones and basically this script here will always pick up on the specificity of this domain so it's not going to hurt anything when you when you push this into production really and push this onto staging it actually could be quite useful but um, on some, you know, I am I am sort of quite aware that some people might not want to do that. So that's why I often keep it just separate here. Um, and once I've finished developing or whatever, I sort of just delete it out of here and and send or I'd go into my Git and I'd just sort of send that back to normal. Um, I'd say yeah, get rid of all that. Um, and then I put it back when you know I save it in here and then put it back when um, when I need it when I'm de developing. As I say, you could get ignore it. You could ignore it from your deploy. There's a few diff Just be aware that you're going to have to manage this. Uh, test it out on your staging site maybe first to make sure it doesn't break anything. It depends on your server config um, and, and 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 what have you. Yeah, I've had success and I've had mm. and I've had problems in in the past. So we'll see how that see how that pans out for yourself. But generally, that's how you would get it set up and working uh, to work on a multi-site locally for Magento. So. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe on the uh, on the old video there. And um, as always, I'll see you in the next one.